Okay, so let's start looking at this last movement. Um, I'm going to be doing mostly work initially on the inner parts and how they relate to the tune. And also um, a little bit about how to get the feel and the style and the lightness we want um, and how, how a little bit of slow practice can help us with that. So the tune at the start of this is... And underneath that we have the second violins and violas, uh, the cellos and bass as well, which I think will be fairly obvious how they fit in. But the second part, you're supporting that with this harmonic line. And violas. So together. It's all in piano, but it has a direction and it has a phrase. Um, and that's all wrapped in semiquavers. So seconds you have. And the violas. So, slow practice. Why would we want to practice that slowly? It's quite easy. It's quite easy to play. The, the reason is, you can see when I'm playing it at that speed, which is roughly the kind of target speed that I'm going to aim for in these videos this week. The, the target I'm after is about crotchet equals 144, um, which Chris might want to go a little bit faster than that, I'm not sure, but it's quite a good tempo for us to try and get up to. But I would recommend starting to practice this with a metronome at crotchet equals 104, which I've got this set to. So let's hear that in the second violin part. starting what seems unnecessarily slow in some ways is at 144 the bow is doing all of the work at 104 suddenly the bow you have to take control of it um, kind of hold on to it to stop it running away with each note. Um, what I would say is, is start at 104, do that phrase, I mean even for four or five times, then move it up a couple of notches, so to 112. And keep the same phrasing throughout, do that four or five times. Then up to 120. When you get to about 120, you'll suddenly find that the bow is now starting to help you. Okay, and then 132, and then up, up to 144. And what that will mean is that when you finally hit your target tempo, you'll you'll have been able to control the bow well enough at the slower tempos that you've really got control of the phrasing. So you can, the, your, your, left, your right hand, your bowing hand is, is taking really, really good control of where you want the phrase to go and, and being accurate rhythmically, um, but, but also you have the lightness of touch and you can bring individual parts of the line out. Um, <clears throat> Which means that then in your left, left hand you can concentrate on the other important part in this, in the inner parts, which is intonation. Um, so what's the function of these notes? So the second violin, uh, violas and second violins, violas, it's a C major chord, so violas, uh, you have the tonic, nice robust C, you have a nice solid major third in the seconds, um, and then you've, you, you've got your F and then uh, the, the important bit, I suppose, is the end of the phrase, where in the second you're going... So it's quite a rising, maybe a slightly higher than usual, um, F-sharp as a leading note up to the 
G, which is the tonic of a G major chord. And then you have a major third in that uh, sixth below violas. So we can start to think about getting that in tune. So the other thing you'll notice about, I'm trying to play the last note in these phrases without vibrato, as we discussed in the introduction. So. Letting it ring. And if you get the intonation right, that will sound um, really, really beautiful. Um, and it will we'll have this lovely ring of transparent sound around the orchestra. <clears throat> The, the one other thing that I think is important in terms of producing that sound is, is left hand. So when you're, when you're using vibrato, um, you'll tend to sort of naturally put a bit of extra finger pressure on to, to make the vibrato work. So you've got the, you're gripping the string to do the vibrato. There's a little bit of a temptation when we lose vibrato sometimes to go oh, I don't have the assistance I need with my tone production, and feather the notes slightly. So they become a little bit less distinct and they don't speak as quickly with the bow. Um, I think once you've got the intonation nailed and doing stuff at a slow tempo can really help you with that if you're hearing how it fits into the harmonic structure. Um, once you've got that nailed, then a little bit of extra left hand pressure can really, really help to bring those notes out and make that beautiful, clear bell-like sound. So. I'm actually pressing on the fingerboard slightly harder than it feels like I should be in that kind of piano dynamic. So I think that would be my first practice exercise for the second violins and violas, is to get that beautiful phrase, get amazing tone production with, with no vibrato. Really think about int intonation and think about where you're sitting in the chord. And by practicing that slowly, um, you should be able to take real control over the bow so that you can bring out the phrase and, um, and provide a beautiful cushion for the tune to sit on top of in that first section. Thank you.